Hey everyone, welcome back to Glitz and Glitter. So, I got an email, a couple of emails from Shauna Wright. Shauna, this one's for you. I know you've been waiting for it. So she asked me if I can do a bubble technique uh, video. I've done some a long, long time ago. I have a couple of them out there, but it's been quite a while. So I love this technique and I figured that I've got a lot more subscribers than I did when I did that video. So we'll do it again. This time I'm gonna do coasters. The last time I think I did a pen holder and something else. I can't remember what the other thing was. So I'm gonna do coasters. Now it's funny because last night, before I even, I mean, I already had this plan, but then I turned on YouTube and I happened to see Petra do them for her Easter one. So, hey, Petra, that was really cool. You did some Easter eggs with it and they came out really pretty. So it's really the same technique. I'm just going to do coasters with it. So the first thing I want to tell you, I almost made my first mistake because I was going to do a smaller coaster. I was going to do this one. And then I realized last second that this has a lip around it and this would be my top. So you don't want to do that. You want a coaster where this is going to be your top, like this section, and this would have been my bottom. So it almost was a disaster or I would have had to modify that coaster when I was done and just create more work for myself. So make sure you're working with the side up that you will be seeing. So... The other thing that I'm going to do different than Petra did, she did really pretty like Easter -y colors on her Easter eggs. I'm going to show you four different ways to do it or four different powders, I should say, so you can see the difference in the powders and the way they look with this technique. Now, if you haven't seen this technique, stick around. It's really cool. We're going to use some dish soap and some water and some UV resin later. But first, I want to put a base layer in here. So if you're going to use something like this, so one of mine is going to be a chameleon powder. This one is my Galaxy. This happens to be my large bottle or an intense chameleon powder. If you're gonna use one of these kinds of powders, which most of the time you do, you're gonna want a, ba a black background. So we're gonna pour a black base, one ounce in each coaster, but only two of them are going to get a black base. The two that are, these are going on will have the black base because these colors look best underneath a black surface. The next one I want to try and show you and see if it's going to work. I'm going to do the base in this light purple. This is out of my new package from the 60 colors. So I'm going to do the top with the holographic glitter and this one is purple. So I thought these two colors would go well together. So one of them will be light purple. And then the last one, I'm going to do a nail powder. And this is like a iridescent one, once it's painted on. I know it looks blue, but it is has some iridescence in there. I don't know if you could see through the bottle. So for the backing on this one, I'm going to use my interference blue powder and just a tiny, tiny little bit of the light blue, not much at all, because I want that powder to do its magic. So we're gonna do this four different ways. Um, let me get some resin. I'm going to be using my casting resin. I'm gonna mix up four ounces. Like I said, one ounce for each one. I'm going to tint two of them black one of them purple and one of them really, really, really light blue. So let me get that mixed up. I was gonna use the black pigment paste to do my black ones, but then I realized why not try the black mica powder in this kit? I haven't tried it yet. So we're gonna do that for the black. I've already split it. This is my two ounces for these two. Then I have two over here for the other ones. So we're gonna start with the black one. Get a nice amount of mica powder in there. Cause you're gonna see the color on the back anyway. So you want a pretty color in there. If you hear something in my background, it is not my dryer. I get asked that a lot. It's my tumbler turner, spinning four tumblers right now. So I promise you, I don't, I'm not in my laundry room <laughs> with the dryer running. 
Maybe I'll show you a picture of them. These four are exactly the same, just a little bit of different colors. And these are for, I don't know how you say your name, Gina or Jenna. She had purchased my donut tumbler, a donut tumbler with the donuts on the lid. And then she had, I guess, four nieces who wanted the exact same one. So now I'm making four more for her nieces. So that's what's turning over there. Let me put this cap back on because I have a tendency of spilling my mica powders. All right, just to get it even, I'm gonna use this little cup just to measure it. I want them all about the same because you're gonna see that from the side. So basically, I'm just gonna pour my colors in now and then we're gonna let them cure. Once they're cured, then we can do the technique I'm talking about. There's one. Yep, that was about two ounces. So this little cup is a pretty accurate. It holds about one fluid ounce. just going to scrape out this paper cup. Now, if you're new to resin, you do not have to run, if you're using mica powders in your resin, there's no need to run it through any kind of vacuum chamber or bubble removing machine because you're not going to see them in the mica powder. So that's one step we don't have to do today. All right, so... I'm just going to wipe off my stick so I could use it again. Now I'm going to do purple, light purple. Oh, this one's not open. I thought I used this one. So this is a new color we get to try today. It should be enough. As you can see, I have my three amigos over here in the corner. Keeping me company since I don't have anybody on my channel with me today. Debbie should be coming back in a couple days because it's almost Tuesday for me. I don't know what day this is going out, but me and Debbie hang out on Tuesdays and create stuff. These coaster molds hold two and a half ounces, which is a pretty, you know, a little bit. It's a great size for coasters. So you're not pouring four or five ounces at a time when you want to make a set of coasters in there definitely thick enough when they're done. So I think it's a great size coaster mold. Everything that I use is linked in my description box if you are interested in any of that. If you don't know where I got it or if you wanna get something like that, just go to my description box. It's all in there plus a whole bunch of other things. In fact, this set will be in my description box. If you want this set, I do sell my demos at a very low cost just to get them out of my house. So that seems to be going well. Thank you to every single person who are taking them off my hands. I appreciate it so my house isn't filling up with all kinds of stuff. Now just make sure your mica powders are mixed in really, really well or you will see them on the backs. I'm just going to put in like the tiniest bit of this blue because I don't want to effect see that like barely there's barely anything in there I don't want to affect that powder the iridescent powder but I do want a little bit of a blue hint to just help it that's about perfect I have not done them like this. So this is kind of an experiment for me as well, but I'm pretty sure it'll work. I don't see why it wouldn't work. 
but I did want to try it since I was going to be doing this technique today so we know in the future and you'll know in the future how many different powders will work if you want to try it it's really don't be intimidated it's not hard at all all you need is a UV light though UV resin and you'll need um, some dishwashing detergent not detergent but dishwashing soap I'm pretty sure you all have that at home. All right, I'm gonna find my alcohol spray and I'm gonna pop some bubbles. Not that you're gonna see them because we're not. And we're just gonna sit and let these cure. I'm so excited for the curing because I haven't done this in so long. So I will see you in a second. It has been about 18 hours. Everything is ready to go. I have my bubble water. All it is is some water with some dish soap in it and a straw so you could blow bubbles and a spoon so we could scoop them. Now when you scoop the bubbles, you don't wanna grab water. I mean, you're gonna end up having a little bit of water but you don't wanna grab extra water. So you're just gonna blow bubbles and you're gonna scoop them like this. We're gonna just do one at a time and I'm going to empty out this bottle. This is my clear hard type. I don't know that there's much in here. I'm just gonna do one at a time and what you do is you cover your surface, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be a coaster. It could be a tray or whatever it is and just spread it all over. I wouldn't do four at a time, but you could probably do two at a time, but I'm not going to do that. I'll do one at a time here, just so you can get the hang of it. Now have your, your light ready because you're going to need it when the bubbles go on pretty much immediately. All right, I'm just going to set that aside. We're going to get some bubbles blown. Let me get my spoon out of here. Now the smaller the bubble, the smaller the indentation. So you want the bubbles to go on t to the surface as quickly as possible before they start popping. Just pile them up. Try not to grab water. I mean, it's in inevitable. See those popped? Okay, now I'm gonna put my light on it really quickly. Get this out of the way. Leave the light on for just a few seconds. It's gonna cure right through those bubbles and you're gonna get indentations of your bubble. Then we're gonna have to dry off that coaster so we can put our powder on. All right, so it's been about a minute. I'm just gonna remove that, take a paper towel, and soak up all these bubbles in water. Try not to break the surface, tent, not the surface, but the, um, the seal. Don't break the seal on the sides. And we'll see what we're left with. So I used a lot of small bubbles. See all those little craters in there that are cured in there? Those are all the little small bubbles. So I'm gonna to try to do one and get some bigger bubbles. Let me shut my light off, get some resin. This is the end of this bottle. Got one right here. Yep, it's open. Just get something to spread it around with. I'll try my hardest to get bigger bubbles this time. It 
If you have a larger container, I have a coffee mug here with my water in it. It's not that huge to get big bubbles made. So it might help if you if you want big bubbles to get a larger container so you have more surface space to make them. We are going to top coat these, so even if the UV resin doesn't touch everything, it doesn't matter. Okay, ready? And you can also see I'm popping all my big bubbles here. I kind of need a bigger spoon as well. It's better to get a huge stack of bubbles on your resin. And I'm not doing this quick enough because I'm trying to... Okay, let's try that and see what we get. Okay, I'm leaving it on for about a minute. Now I did go grab a larger spoon, a serving spoon. That way I can grab more bubbles at once. So this one looks a little bit bigger. So depending on what look you're going for, so here's the small bubbles and here's the larger bubbles. Now let's move these out of the way and we'll do these two. Let me get some resin on here. Hopefully this bigger spoon works better because they are going to start popping while they're waiting for you to get them all on. They're not just going to sit there and wait for you. So the bigger the spoon you have, the faster you can get your bubbles onto your surface. And if they pop, then just put some more bubbles over them. It's still going to cure through it. So this would be layer two, and then we're going to do a third layer of of regular resin on the top. I'll probably use my four hour fast cure just to get these done quicker. But you don't have to, you can use any kind. All right, let me try the larger spoon now. See how that works much faster. I'm just gonna grab some more for this side and get the light on to cure. Okay, let's see what we got. I need another paper towel. That one's all wet. Oh, that one looks cool. There we got big ones. So now we got small, little tiny bubbles. Then you got medium, and then you got large. So let's do one more and see what we get. So I guess it's all personal preference, what you're going for. Looks kind of like the dragon scale. I think a lot of people call this dragon scale. All right, last one, and then we're gonna brush on some mica powder. So I got my switching sponge out. That way I can brush the powder into the switching sponge to change over to the next powder. I got mine at the Dollar Tree, but if you don't have a Dollar Tree where you're at, then uh, I will link one below in the description box. A little more, not quite covered. All right, ready? Let's see what we get. Let me get my spoon ready. Come on, get off. I'm gonna do a little small and a little big. 
little more on this side. All right, let's see what we get. Last one. Okay, I'm doing it for less than a minute. It doesn't take that long. Let's wipe this one up. Let's see what we got. Then I'm gonna fully dry these before I put any kind of powder on there. You don't want any. So we kind of got like a nice variety, small, medium, large, and then a little bit of both on this one. So let me just take a minute or two and get these dried off. Get your switching sponge ready. That's what this looks like. And you'll just take your brush and wipe it in there when we change powders. And um, then we will get started with the next step. They're fully dry now. I'm just going to take this blue powder. I'm going to start with the lightest one and work my way down. And we're just going to brush this into the UV resin. It will stick. And it should have a really cool iridescent effect underneath the resin when we top coat it. That's why I made a little light blue background for it, just to kind of help it would probably work with a like a white background too, I'm thinking. I just wanted to make sure we got the blue color out of it. You could put any color background you want behind this stuff and you'll probably get a different effect depending on what kind of powder you're using. Okay, that's more than enough. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take these over to the garbage can with like a big puffy this brush right here actually no I'm not because that one has gold in it so I'm going to take this to the garbage can and wipe everything out so I just took this large clean brush and I just wiped all of the extra powder out like that so now we're going to do the purple one so I'm just going to get all my powder into here from the blue And this one is going to be the holographic glitter. And the same thing. We're just going to spread it all around. I don't know about this glitter. Oh, look at that. The glitter isn't sticking. I did not realize that that wouldn't stick. Okay, we're going to have to have a change of plan. Let's find a powder that will go with this color. I'm just gonna save my glitter because it doesn't stick. So we just learned a lesson. I fully expected that to stick. All right, I'm gonna brush that out because if it's a loose glitter on the top, it's gonna float with my next, um, my next layer. I'll be right back. I'm going to use this pink nail powder instead. It's similar to the blue. It's just pink. So I'm just going to spread this one on. That's disappointing. I really wanted the holographic glitter to work. So it has to be a powder that's going to stick. Get it all in those spots. All right, and then I'm just gonna take this over to the garbage and do the same thing. Get all that extra powder off or it's gonna float. The next one is the black background and I'm gonna use the Galaxy. Before I go brush it off, I'm just going to do the last one. I'm going to get a smaller brush though because it's got smaller holes in this one. This one is going to be the blue um, Intense. This is the Intense Mica Powder.
All right, I'm just gonna go clean these out and mix up some resin. So I'll come back as soon as I'm ready to go on to the next one. But doesn't that look cool? Look at those two colors. That was seven more ounces, so I'm probably gonna have extra. So this pink one kind of curled up because the UV resin pulled it towards, you know how UV resin will shrink it a little bit? So it's curled a little bit, so it's not completely level anymore. So I'm definitely gonna have extra. I'm just trying to pour them from eye level so I can see when to stop. That's why you don't hear me. Whoop, that one's got way too much. This one, I won't be able to dome that well because it's not completely level. So when I take it out of the mold to get it level, I'm just going to heat it up and put it underneath a heavy book or something. Okay, so that's good. Now, like I said, if you um, don't brush it out, see how I have? You probably can't see, but I can see. There's a tiny little bit of mica powder that's floating. So I'm just gonna try to pull what I can out or try to mix it into your clear resin and you would never know it's there either because there's hardly any floating. I just don't want them curing like that where it's a little tiny uh, patch of mica powders. So I'm just gonna mix it into the clear resin Pop any bubbles that I create and let them cure. And we'll see what they're gonna look like. This one, you can't really see anything. I do see the beautiful blue um, iridescence in that though. Pink one's not as iridescent as the blue one, unfortunately. I don't know if you could see that, but it keeps coming it's from the sides. That's where the the powder was. I couldn't get it all off the sides of the silicone that was still exposed. So it's now going in here. So I'm just going to babysit these for a while. No big deal. So don't do these if you're walking out the door and you can't watch them. Otherwise, you'll have little patches of mica powder on the tops. All right. I will be back as soon as they're cured. So I had like two ounces of leftover resin and I also had this new mold that I just made and I've never tested it before and this is a cute tiny little hippo. So I added a little bit of latte color. I kept it really really light. I re-ran it through the vacuum chamber to get the bubbles out that I stirred in with the... So I don't even know how much this holds. Let's hope. Oh, I should have sprayed it with alcohol first. It's a little late now. Only because there's little ears at the top and I don't want bubbles in them. Let me just try to get them out. I keep forgetting to spray it with alcohol. I love that trick. It stops any bubbles from forming. So next time I do this mold. So I don't even know how much it holds. So we're going to try it today for the first time. Hopefully it holds two ounces. Oh my gosh, it's going to be perfect. It was meant to be tested today. Absolutely perfect amount. I can even dome the bottom. Oh my gosh, that's going to be so cute. Okay, now I'm going to just let everything be. 
They are done. I did take them out of the mold because there's really no reveal, but look at those. Super cool. There's a tiny bit that you could see on the surface, but it really just blends in with the background. So that was like the medium sized bubbles. This was the tiny little bubbles, which they were almost too tiny because Without being in person, like, I can see all the differentiating areas, the craters, but in a camera you really can't. But that blue is really intense and deep and pretty. And then this one had small, medium, and large, so that was kind of cool. And it's very iridescent, very pretty. I may edge these with silver, I'm not sure, just to kind of tie them all together as a set. And this one, the mica powder on the back, well, you can't see it on the back, but that's the only thing I can think of why we got that line of silver there. So when the mica powders, you know, came to the center, I don't know. I'm not sure what happened there. But you can see the iridescence. This is the back. And then blue came out. Well, this was the uh, interference blue, really pretty. And then the black mica powder came out nice. So I'm going to set these aside right there and we're going to unmold my brand new little guy, which is a little tiny hippo. And I'm hoping he's, he comes out so easy. Look at that. Ready? There he is. Oh, you know what? I need to, I need to get his face on there before I show you. Hang on. Okay, here he is. So I gave him some gold ears. You probably can't see, but I did color his eyes. There's two eyes. And if I would have sprayed alcohol in the mold, each eye has the tiniest bubble. And that would not have happened if I sprayed alcohol in the mold. I did fill in his little nose and his mouth. Now doming him wasn't such a great idea because that gave him a little double chin. So I will remember next time not to dome him. And that's him. There's not a bubble in sight. He's got a small tail. He is super cute. Now, he's about the size of my little elk. Maybe a little bit smaller. But they both hold two ounces, so he's just a different shape. So let me know what you think of the little hippo. I have a couple more molds coming up, but I decided to do him first, and I didn't plan on doing him today. So that is that, you guys. I will get you a few pictures. Thanks for coming out. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you all tomorrow. You have a blessed day, you guys. Bye.